everybody. Welcome. It's Chris Petri. Thanks so much for coming by. Welcome to another exciting video here. We're going to do a beautiful Cotswold scene in the United Kingdom. This is a street scene, a beautiful uh, home uh, right on the uh, street. Beautiful picket fence, ivy on the sides, uh, on the front of the buildings, on the brickwork, some beautiful uh, flower pots, hanging flower pots, some beautiful flowers along the fence. This is just a gorgeous scene to try. Give it uh, give it a chance. Try this video out. We're going to do all kinds of interesting um, techniques here. We're going to do tons of splashing technique. We're going to do uh, a la prima painting, where basically we're going to start with the darks in this painting, which makes it easier. So you'll have a simple approach to this painting. You do your darks first, then you do your lights later. Um, so we'll explain all that in this video. you got to join along, have some fun here. We'll zoom into the painting. But basically, um, this is a fun painting to do. You can uh, try this painting numerous times with different color schemes, different style uh, plantings and flowers and colors. Just a fun painting overall to do. And I hope you'll enjoy this. And I'll zoom in just a little more here. You can work when you're painting from this portion right here. You can hit pause right now if you want to paint from this. And then, of course, you can hit pause once we're done with the pencil drawing just in a few minutes. So we'll get right into the pencil drawing next. This is the painting finished when we complete the uh, painting 100%. So you can do this, uh, you know, you can work from this when you do your painting. You can watch the video full through kind of see the flow of things, how everything goes, and I'll zoom in just a little more. All right, we just saw the finished painting, everyone. And now we're just looking at the cell phone here. I have my cell phone. I'll zoom out just a bit so you can kind of see. There we go. So I have an iPhone. I just searched online, found a really picture that I really liked of the Cotswolds in the United Kingdom of a nice street scene. This is a nice Cotswold um, home street scene type of look. Really beautiful flowers along here on the fence, a nice picket fence. A gorgeous doorway here with a gable roof and some ivy has a nice flow to it a nice look to it the only thing I would say is if you want to work with uh, photographs if you don't know how to use your phone or your laptop with adjusting photos um, you just would want to ask somebody like that you might know a friend a family member you know a grand uh, grandson granddaughter uh, niece nephew uh, Anyone you know, friends, chances are you'll have somebody that knows how to really do some adjustments to your photographs, crop down photos. You might take a larger photo and then make it smaller. That's what I did here. I made this smaller and then I adjusted the light in this photograph on my cell phone. You could do this uh, same idea on a laptop. Uh, so if you're not great with technology, and I'm not the greatest at technology either, with cell phones and all that, and laptops and iPads and the whole nine yards, just ask somebody that knows that's really good with it, with the, you know, the technology and with phones and laptops and all that good stuff. Just ask them, how do you adjust a picture and how do you crop a picture? So that's all you really want to uh, really know is how to crop a picture first, make it smaller so you can zoom in on a certain section of your photo that you'd like to paint. And as well, you just want, might want to ask, how do I make the picture a little brighter or a little darker? It depends. You want to go in there and adjust it and see how it looks. But this, I made brighter. You can kind of see there's a lot of really, a lot of white, bright areas in this. And I did that by adjusting the picture in the photo section of my uh, software on my cell phone. So if you're not quite sure how to do these types of things, Someone will show it to you. It's no problem. You just ask them. They'll run it by you a few times, and then you'll have it, and you'll you'll understand it and be able to do it in the future. And then if you need to, you can always get a, a brush, you know, you can always brush up on it again with the same person that showed you the first time. But the main thing is <clears throat> if you're working from photographs, it's really a great advantage if you can adjust it by cropping down your photos like this and 
adjusting the light. So you can see there's a lot of bright white here. And that's light. And I just adjusted my photograph in that program that I have on my iPhone. So that really makes a lot of sense to do it that way. And if you can't, don't know how to do it, just ask somebody, no big deal. Or you can even go online and search it too. You can research how to adjust photographs on YouTube. So that being said, let's get right into it here. Let's start drawing our picture, our photograph that we're working from. I hope I didn't have too many details here, but I wanted to make that really clear. You know, if you need a little bit of, um, if you need to brush up a little bit on your skills with adjusting photographs like cropping and also adding light or darks to your photograph, which you can do easily on the programs and software on your phone, that's a good thing to really research because you can uh, you can make a lot of cool enhancements to your photographs when you're working from photographs. So I'm hope, hoping that's helpful, helpful to you. And uh, okay, so here enough talk, let's get into the action. So I will remove some books here that I have on my table, my art table, and then I have uh, papers and things. Let me put this across for me. I'm gonna work from this, so I'm gonna set this across for me. You can probably find that photograph really easy on online if you just type in uh, Cotswolds um, uh, Village. Cotswolds Village scenes, you can find something very simple. That's pretty much the same. And we're going to start out. We're going to uh, we're going to use our mechanical pencil. We have everything uh, laid out here. The paper is good. T today we're actually going to use some uh, satin paper. This is Arches satin paper, so it's not rough. It's basically that smooth, beautiful, smooth finish. We're going to use that for right now. We're going to make this a painting where we're not going to suffer over details. We're going to kind of just have fun and create a quick painting, a quick composition, having fun, and not really sweating over all the details and taking a lot of time. Watercolor is a fast medium. If you can work fast, you're going to, at least if you can learn how to paint fast, you'll, you'll have an advantage. You can always go back and paint slower if you want, but if you can learn to paint fast, you're, you're going to be way ahead of the game uh, when it comes to watercolors because watercolors is, uh, the watercolor medium is, it dries fast and um, you can really benefit by uh, painting quickly. So let's do that. Let's draw first. We have our paper, satin paper, Arches satin, finished paper. Okay, I'm going to just... We don't have to uh, use all the paper here. Let me just take a quick look here and let's see. All right, so let's... Okay, I'm going to take this portion here and let's make this... Again, we always do our same routine. I will find my magic marker, my black magic marker, Sharpie pen. We're going to want to make some hash marks on our paper. So here, about a quarter of the way up. So if we have a quarter, a half, and a three quarters, let's do a quarter of the way up, and we'll say fence. Three quarters of the way up, um, roof, point. Point of the roof, roof point, however you want to notate it, fine. Halfway, that's not really... Basically, if we can get the quarter, one quarter of the paper up, fence, top, half, three quarters of the way up, roof point, point of roof, and that's all we really need. Other than that, everything else is going to really just work fine. This is a simple uh, drawing, not a lot. So let's go here. We're going to go across. Lots of, so I'm just going to put in some, I'm going to turn down the lights a little bit here so we could see the pencil marks. I think I'm going to use a darker pencil here. 
Let's see if I can find even a darker pencil yet. Okay. Better. Okay. So now we're doing our bushes. Then once we have our bushes here, let's go in and we'll do our doorway. This is the door. There's some bushes, or there's some plants here, potted plants hanging. Okay. Just a little bit of the bottom of the sidewalk here. Okay. Now we will we said three quarters was the peak of that roof. Might be a little bit higher, no big deal. There we go. Maybe we just lightly trace it like that. And if we lightly trace it, we get a better feel for how it's going to look. And, I, and now as I lightly trace that, I say, yeah, that looks good. That's a good... The, um, the angles look good on this. So that's fine. That's going to look okay. And then I just kind of go up. I'm contour drawing. And I'm going down this way here, another support beam coming out from the house to support that uh, roof here. That looks good. Now that we have that, we're going to look up here and say, okay, more uh, ivy and greenery here on the uh, brick front of this house. <clears throat> and you can just enhance that any way you want. And we're just going to have fun with this. We're not going to... This is just a composition, a fun thing to do. We're not trying to do a finished painting, really. If it turns out to be really great, we can frame it. But we're just having fun. We're doing a composition here. So we have some more ivy and plants here. And then over here, there's um, a window. I might change and make this window um, oh, an actual window here in the photograph. It looks a little bit like it's... I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to try to make a window over here. So I'll make it three panes, the window, like that. Over here, no big deal. We're not going to worry about this. Okay, and then up here we have a potted plant. And the same thing over here, we have a potted plant over here. They're both at the same level, so I'm going to make sure I make a level mark here and say, okay, the, the first potted plant I drew was here where the, the, um, where the uh, fastener is up here on the uh, boards of this roof. The fastener is here where they hang this potted plant. Let me go over, make a level mark and say, okay, that's level. That wouldn't be level. This is level, right? So we get a level mark and we say, okay, here, that's where the other potted plant's going to be. Just like that. Simple as that. And then you just, 
I'm just very, you know, um, carefree, making some flower type shapes like that. We're going to splash and have a good time with our potted plants here. Maybe we'll make one a little bit lower, more uh, hanging lower, and then this one we're going to make a little bit just higher up. So we have a little bit of that. We don't want to have things too symmetrical. And then here we're going to do our gorgeous light. So the light is going to be here. So that's our light fixture over top. It's a little bit smaller in the photograph. I think I went a little bit larger, but that's n not a big deal. You can make things larger or smaller as you would like. It's your painting. Okay. That makes sense, right? It's your painting. You know, you can adjust things, make things different. It's up to you. As long as you have the basic idea of it, th th then that's the fine point to, to notice. Okay, now we have the door here. And on the door there might be a small knock door knocker here. And there's a handle over here. I don't know if we're going to see that too much. We're going to have the fence. Okay, so now we're pretty much all our ivies up here. We're going to splash and have a good time making our ivy and plants over here and on the wall over here. And then here, we're at the point of working in our fence. With our fence, we're just basically, let's do the vertical slats first. The pickets, the vertical pickets first, let's do that. And we just go one, two, if you need a ruler here, use a ruler. Grab a ruler. If you have to measure it, that's fine. We can make them half inch apart. Half, 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 half inch. If you use uh, metric, you know, you can do your centimeters and say um, 1.5 centimeters. One point, we well, make them maybe 1.5 centimeters apart. And that's all. I'm just making the slats of the fence, the pickets. Okay, and then there's some more plantings here. And then I'm just going to make the bottom of the fence along the bottom of the painting. A light line just to indicate the bottom portion. And then I'm just going to do equal, you know, try to, I'm trying to space everything equal. That's fine. And then over here. Okay, over here we, we have a really fun and interesting uh, pot. Uh, this is like a pot, a, pl a planter. With some flowers here so there's a so I'm just adding some sketchy marks to let me myself know I have to add in some flowers over here and there's a little planter box here on the right that's hanging on the fence There's shadows under there, so you can do a little bit of shadowing like that. You can add some shadows with your pencil, um, just to indicate where you're going to add some shadows when you're painting. It helps to 
kind of do it first and then with your pencil marks and then when you're going in and painting you're going to see the pencil marks and go oh, yeah I got to do the shadows there all right so we're having a great time here we're just sketching in our scene and I this is plenty of information to do with your pencil um, and sketching in this and contour drawing so it's a combination of sketching and contour drawing um, I'm not too like really set on always doing exactly contour drawing 100% I will do some sketching with contour drawing uh, at the same time so I use both techniques so I would hope you will do the same thing if you need to sketch sometimes sketch some ideas if you're comfortable going in and contour drawing the whole thing fine do it that way um, and now I'm just doing more of a somewhat of a contour drawing I'm just sort of getting in my my lines for my fence the uh, lateral or um, horizontal fence supports that tie all the pickets together and hold the pickets upright and then this is the gate that's on this portion of the fence And that just gives us a little extra white pickets to um, kind of enhance the idea that there's a, a, a gate here on the front of this uh, doorway here. And I think that's good. We have plenty of sketching now, plenty of contour drawing. Next thing is we're just going to have some great fun painting, splashing on our paint, having a good time. All right, let's take a break. We've done a lot of drawing, a lot of sketching. The main thing is take some breaks once in a while. It helps to just refresh. And uh, I also mentioned too, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also if you're subscribing right next to the subscribe button, there's a small little bell. If you click that bell, it'll, it'll actually uh, notify you each time we're creating a new video here on my channel. So I wanna make sure you're getting each video every week that we're creating new videos. This way you can check them out quick. If you like them, great. You're going to work along with us here. We're going to paint together. And then if not, no big deal. You can just move on to the next week when we do something else you might like more. Um, each week we're doing all different types of subject matter, but everything is always watercolor. So if this, if your water, if watercolor is your medium, then you need, you know, you need to be here constantly checking in and, and learning new techniques, new ways of doing things. And you'll see that you'll learn a lot of great information here on my channel. Um, I try to always explain everything in detail so that you have all the information you'll need to create beautiful paintings. All right, so we'll come right back in just a second. All right, we'll have some fun. We'll splash on the paint and have a good time. All right, we'll be right back. All right, thank you everyone for coming by. We're back and we're gonna start painting. Let's do it, let's do it. I'm gonna have some fresh water here. I gotta empty my water bucket. Okay, I always keep fresh water in my water bucket and uh, that is uh, very important. So again, we're working from a photograph on our cell phone here. That's the photograph I'm working from and you can see there's really a very strong uh, dark and light pattern here in this photograph and that's, as a watercolor artist, if you can really uh, squint your eyes and kind of look at that dark and light pattern in your uh, photographs that you're working from or if you're working outdoors or working from other artists. Uh, I work from photographs. I work from live studies. I work from a lot of uh, watercolor books that I have from various watercolor artists, uh, contemporary artists as well as, you know, the old masters going back, you know, a lot of the um, Winslow Homer and Wyeth and all these great artists. There's so many great artists out there watercolor artists you can paint their paintings look at their work draw and paint from their work 
And then you can work from contemporary artists here on YouTube. There's lots of great artists on YouTube. And uh, so I'm hoping you're using all those uh, resources to, to get yourself to the next level. So here you can see there's a very, if you're looking at this, you'll see there's a very strong pattern of darks and lights. I did adjust the uh, photograph to make it lighter and darker. So I made it lighter so that these areas up here, over here and on the fence and over here and on some of these flowers were much lighter and brighter. So I did that by just adjusting the settings on the photograph on my phone. If you don't know how to do that, please ask somebody that knows how to use cell phones really well. They'll show you how to do it real simple. It takes five minutes, not even. And um, so you'll see that that really benefits us as a watercolor artist. If you can see those real dark darks and those really bright lights, you just use that pattern in your painting as you go, and we'll do that right now. So what I'll do is I mostly paint a la prima, which is all in one go. It's also called the direct approach, so either a la prima or direct approach. Basically, I go in, I get the darks in first, and I just continue throughout the painting to uh, finish everything up, starting with darks and then working into the middle tones, and then and I leave the lights, whatever they may be, if I have to add in a little light, bits of wash, that's fine. But that's pretty much my modus operandi as I go through my painting. So as I do my darks, that's gonna set the pace for my painting, and then I work from there. So I'm gonna set this across from me one more time. Okay, so that's setting across from me, straight across. And let's have a good time, let's have fun here. Um, let's get with our um, Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, we're going to do uh, burnt, uh, burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, French Ultramarine Blue. We're going to make this uh, door here. Now when I look at my photograph, there's some flowers on these potted plants hanging, so I don't want to go and make the exact shape of a rectangle here or square. I want to leave it a little bit uh, uneven there, haphazard, like that, so that we have some flower, bits of flower shapes. And again, I'm using really dark darks here, straight paint, no water really, just the dampness of the brush. So if I can just mention that, a big a large part of my technique is I'm using a lot of times just straight paint right from the from the uh, wells here, from the uh, pans. So I don't use dry paint. I use always wet, moist paint. Um, I have many videos. You could type in Chris Petri palette, those three words, Chris Petri palette. You'll find tons of videos that I did, at least 10, on how I set up my palette and keep my paints moist. But this is the key to my technique and You'll, you'll find that I use a lot of times just straight paint with a damp brush and not much water. And I'm just going to go around like that. Especially with these darks here, you don't, we don't want to add too much water. Just very little water. Does that make sense? We want to keep this... And we also want to make sure that Let's, let's tap around and make different shapes and uh, brush marks. So that's ideal to change directions with the brush versus just doing this all the time. Let's change brush strokes like this. It gives your your actual text your texture to your watercolor. It looks it looks more interesting. Does that make sense? I mean, you could do it any way you want. You're the artist. You decide how you want your technique to look. I'm just explaining how I do it. So I I like to change up the brush strokes like that. I'm always changing around the 
little bit of splashing. Then we're gonna go in. I dry the brush off on my tissue like that. And now we can zip in these darks here. And again, if you, let's practice our brush strokes, practice our techniques with our brush a lot, because you're really gonna have an advantage if you can zip through these, these sections quick. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. Let's see how fast I can go. There we go, look at that. Have fun with this. Don't suffer over it. And if they don't come out perfect, that's all right too. But try to get through things quick. Perfect, look at that. A couple splashes. And then we'll come in later and do any little bit of, uh, like let's say a little bit of tonal value or tone on these fen the fence over here. But this is pretty bright. This is bright white light coming across the picture from the front like this. And this this uh, brush over, uh, this uh, fence section over here is all bright, bright light. So let's keep that like that. And if you have a little bit of uh, smudges or you can just, it's okay. No big deal. We're going to, we'll uh, add some green to that. Olive green. A couple splashes. Look at that. You just fix things with splashes actually. No big deal because we're, we're having fun here. Again, the light's coming from more or less the front of the picture, so like this, so. Okay, let's keep working on our darks. We said we were gonna work darks first, and then into the middle tones, and then the lightest lights last. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so I'm doing that really dark shadow under the uh, eaves, the rake, the rake uh, edges of these, of this gable roof here, and I'm using the same colors, burnt sienna, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. We're doing dark darks first, again a la prima. So we can just go right on and continue with the dark darks. Okay. So we have the door. Windows over here, the window panes, darks. at the top of the window. Then maybe toward the bottom of the window I see a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm looking at the colors on the photograph that I'm working from. That makes makes things easy if you just keep your eyes on the photographs that you're working from or if you're in doing this in uh, plain air or and then we immediately start to tie that in with the green bushes here these are very light so I'm going to splash there the bushes are very light on top so there we go some very cadmium lemon yellow so if you work in, uh, splash in and kind of just lightly uh, work in some cadmium lemon yellow to the top of those bushes, you're gonna have a really great uh, effect. And then there's some white flowers and green 
So let's start working some greens here. Sap green, olive green, maybe some cerulean blue. And I'll just do a little bit of that. Lots of flowers, so I'm just going to do some tiny little bits of sp spots of color. Some splashes. A lot of splashing on this picture, this painting, because there's lots of flowers, lots of very fine uh, shapes. So that that's how we cover a lot of territory quickly. Some purple for the shadowing underneath. Okay, so some purple shadowing here and there. And this will look fine. And again, darks first. So we worked in some greens and cadmium lemon yellow for our bushes over here and flowers. Now let's let's see if we can let's is there more darks we can yes there's more darks we can do so we'll go over here we'll try to keep our palette organized darks on one side other colors on the other okay so this is there's some darks in these uh, potted plants so let's get those in here and there. So just you tap in a little bit of darks where you see them. This one, this side has more darks than this potted plant. I noticed that right away. Um, I'm going to take some purple and then some of that dark. And we're going to make some shadow under here. And you can notice that it's not quite as dark as this. The shadow color is a little lighter. Then, more water. So this here, more water. Burnt umber. Raw umber, so that's some raw umber there. Let's add some burnt sienna. And I'm constantly working from my picture, from my photograph. I'm looking the whole time at my photograph, making sure I'm sticking with that plan, that photograph. And if you have a photograph, that's your plan of, uh, of uh, what you're going to be doing for your whole painting. You're going to be looking at it for your colors. You're going to be looking at it for your darks and your lights. So really, it's kind of simple. When you work from a photograph, you're just going to try to stick to that basic idea of darks and lights, looking at your photograph, where your dark, you know, the door is the darkest dark. There's some dark darks under here, under that roof. And then there's some darks here and there in the uh, ivy along the front of this uh, house here, this beautiful Cotswold house. And there's some darks underneath the plants here and some shadows. We'll get to those later. But now that we're getting our darks all completed, we're, we're pretty much in good shape. And we should take a break. Um, burnt umber, maybe some alizarin crimson and burnt umber to give us that. It kind of looks like a, a kind of a mixture of that there. 
and And I'm working around the light there. Okay, let's take a break. We've been working already 15, 20 minutes. Um, we got a lot of uh, dark, our darks are in now. The door is the, the darkest dark, that, that entry door for that beautiful Cotswold uh, home along our beautiful Cotswold uh, street scene here in the United Kingdom and we have some bushes here we got those in some lights some medium tonal values some really bright lights we're gonna m create more details here as we go but for the most part we're starting to really see things come together here we have the darkest darks first that looks really good we're gonna we're gonna continue on our darkest darks up here in our um, ivy areas of the ivy along the beautiful brick front of this house and once we get those darks in then we'll start working in the medium tones which are like the greens and the you know uh it's kind of like a warm green some sap green olive green we have yellow ochre raw siennas raw umbers we're going to work in those nice warm greens along the front of the the house here this Cot cotswold house and um I think we'll, we'll be really good. Once we get some of those colors and tones in there, we'll be fine. All right, so let's come right back. Just a break we have to take here just to relax a little bit, and we'll come back and get started again. I don't know how you like doing this, but if anything, you're going to have a fun time splashing and you're going to have a fun time finger painting, doing that finger painting technique. You're going to be using interesting colors here. Look at this. We have some gorgeous cerulean. Look at that. Ooh, that looks good. Cerulean blue. Maybe a little bit of purple under there. Then darker darks, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, some of those darker darks again. And maybe we'll just go with a little. Then we'll get some greens. We'll do some greens under there. little bit of splashing that's some of the um, leaves that grow out beyond the fence All right, we've had a ton of fun here. I hope you enjoyed this painting. Um, you can do more or less than what I've done here, but the main point is, again, we're just, we'll cover it quick one time. Dark darks first. So, you know, we get in our drawing first, our pencil drawing first, dark darks, paint in those dark darks. The door is the darkest dark, large uh, area of darks. You get that all in. 
and then you're painting around the fence. Negative shape painting, we're painting around a subject to make it appear. So we paint darks around the white fence and the white fence appears. So we're negative shape painting around this fence. Dark darks for that door. We have um, We have plenty of interesting splashing technique here. You can see I'm continuing to splash. This may be more splashing than you like. If you don't like splashing, that's fine. You can paint it in. Um, we can take a little bit of white paint, titanium white. Add a little bit of uh, yellow ochre to the titanium white. Like that. A little bit of white. Titanium white tube. Tube paint with a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And then what we can do is we can uh, do a little bit of uh, details here. Like that. So we add that bit of uh, we added the um, some highlights. If that's um, I added a little bit too much of the yellow ochre. In that case. I take my needlepoint brush, needlepoint brush here, great uh, brush, and then we we can do that. A little bit of blue. add a little bit of red. We have red flowers over here. So this is where you can add more colors. The flowers over here, red red uh, flowers in these potted plants. So I'm going to add those in. There's some, uh, I added just a little bit of red in the door. Orange. There's some orange flowers here. Straight paint, no water. We use a needlepoint brush, straight paint, no water. We'll get some orange flowers in there. And now we're just adding more colors. Um, we could add uh, some red flowers over here. Maybe some purple. some orange. Some cadmium lemon yellow. All right, I hope you've had fun. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're doing paintings like this every week. Every week we're doing new things. This happens to be a street scene where we're doing a beautiful Cotswold scene in the United Kingdom. Beautiful uh, flowers and fences and door, you know, the front door of a beautiful uh, home here. Uh, lots of uh, colors, the greenery, brickwork. We're having tons of fun with this. We also do other paintings. We do boats and seascapes, landscapes. We do figure painting. So everything watercolor here on this channel. I hope you'll come back over and over again. If you hit the notification bell when you subscribe below, uh, you'll be alerted each time we create a new video. And uh, if you give me a thumbs up, 
that you like this video. I'll do more like this. If you give me a thumbs down, then I know um, you might like some other uh, paintings that I do more often. So um, thumbs up and thumbs down is always a great thing for my channel if you can do that. This way I kind of can see what you like more. I'll paint more of what everyone wants to see on my channel, um, but I tend to try to change things quite a bit um, as I go each week so that I give a little bit of um, variety for everyone that's a watercolor artist out there. You want to learn. You want to learn new techniques. You want to learn different types of subject matter. So I try to do all of those things for you, and I hope you'll enjoy this uh, video. I hope you'll uh, ask questions in the questions and the uh, comments section. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I pretty much answer everyone's questions that comes into the comments section. So if you do have questions, please let me know. And I thank you so much, too, for all the great praises and, th you know, the thankfulness that everyone shows me all the time. I'm so, you know, I appreciate that so much, that everyone uh, supports me and, and uh, uh, does a lot for me to uh, give me excitement and give me uh, more energy to do my, my paintings every week and my videos every week. So you guys all appreciate you very much, and thanks so much for all your great uh, encouragement. I'll be back again, of course. Uh, in just a few days or so to create another painting for you, another video, and uh, we'll all get a...
excited. It's watercolors. We're learning new things all the time and getting better and better. All right, we'll see you on the next video.